Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. I am playing Moon Over Miami is because I compiled a list of women who have not claimed Weinstein assaulted them, and that list would include Roseanne Barr. She's never said uh, Harvey assaulted her. Rosie O'Donnell never said that Harvey Weinstein assaulted her. I haven't seen any claims by Whoopi Goldberg, Lena Dunham, Barbara Streisand. Janine Garofalo never claimed it. Rhea Perlman, Cher never claimed it. How about Sarah... Sandra Bernhardt, a beautiful woman, or Tilda Swinton, another beauty. Kathy Bates has not claimed Weinstein uh, tried anything with her. Aretha Franklin. And for that matter, Oprah Winfrey's never claimed uh, any kind of, uh, you know, incident with, with Harvey. Bette Midler's not on the list. Kathy Griffin's never claimed any, <laughs> any Harvey Weinstein stuff. Phyllis Diller, Joan Rivers, Janet Reno, Madeleine Albright, Angela Merkel. And I wonder why. They're all such charming Progressive women. I do not understand why Harvey Weinstein has not been, uh, you know, attracted to them. I can't figure that one out. Yes, I can. Now, here in the Bay Area of California, where I broadcast from, you say, "Ah, who cares? I don't want to hear about the fires. You will hear about the fires. Not because merely the fact that I, your favorite talk show host, or you wouldn't be listening to me if I were not, I am choking to death. We have white ash falling for four straight days. I know it's nothing compared to those who died or had their houses and possessions burned or seen their spouses burned to death up in the wine country. But to me, it's pretty devastating since I moved to the Bay Area in 1974 primarily for one reason, and that was clean air. I fled New York because I was living in Forest Hills, New York at the time, up in Rigo Park, as a matter of fact, and ash used to fall out of the sky every day from the incinerators that were used in the apartment buildings. If you can believe it, back in the 60s, apartments in New York were allowed to burn garbage in their incinerators, and ash would fall all over the area on your car and your nose. No one paid attention to it, but I knew I would die if I had stayed there, or I would look like Anthony Weiner. In either case, I left. I left for cleaner air, and here I am, and the only thing that I really like here is the air. Well, now the air is gone, and I tweet, in case you think I'm bell- bellyaching about something that's not important, you know, do me a favor. Let's see if it's even up on michaelsavage.com yet, because you've got to look at this picture, if you could see it. I think it's a big deal, because you've got to understand the ramifications. Here it is, raining ash, choking on wine country fires. Go to uh, michaelsavage.com. Say, well, what's the point? Well, what's the point? It's going to take a minimum of a decade for the San Francisco Bay Area, mainly the wine country, to recover from this fire. Real estate values are going to plummet, and I'll tell you right now, mark my words, the sharks are already moving in to buy 10 cents on the dollar. And don't be surprised if you wake up and find out in a few years from now that the Chinese bought thousands of acres in the wine country uh, for their own personal gain. Yeah, when I say Chinese, of course, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? China, 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 China. They own huge swaths of our farmland. They're going to move in and buy a lot of the vineyard land, uh, as, as you could imagine. Now, I want to ask you a question, which is this. Why Harvey Weinstein and why now? There's an article in today's L.A. Times, Has Anyone Fallen Faster Than Harvey Weinstein? It says, in less than a week, the mounting scandal over allegations of sexual harassment and assault has rapidly consumed the once powerful film mogul and the entertainment industry as a whole. Uh, We all know about that. But I'm asking why so fast and why so high? Let's begin with... Uh, clip 03, here's Mr. Weinstein himself coming out of, I don't know, his daughter's house where they just had an incident, and he tries to appeal to the vermin, the paparazzi in clip 3. Listen to this. I'm not doing okay. You're not. I'm trying. I gotta get help, guys. You know what? We all make mistakes. Second chance, I hope. Okay? And you know what? I've always been loyal to you guys. I'm not like those who treat you like I've been a good guy. 
okay, he's a good guy, and he's uh, made a mistake for the last 30 years. But the question is, why Harvey Weinstein, and why now? And I'm going to tell you something. Be very careful, all of, the, all of you who may be conservatives and gloating over Weinstein's fall, because it's not going to be limited to Weinstein. You see, the last few years have seen climate change, and not the kind that the Democrats believe in. No, no, not that kind at all, my friends. There's been a climate change of attacks on white males, on black males, in other words, on males. The trial of Bill Cosby and the accusations against the iconic comedian opened the window about the sexual predation by powerful men. Cosby's demise and the swift fall of other men in entertainment encouraged an heroic few women to talk to the New York Times to take on one man's decades-long abuse, a man whose bullying power in Hollywood, whose fearful personal wrath, whose army of attorneys watching for libel or slander allowed him to become one of the worst offenders. Now add to that the rising storm of anti-white male sentiment in the film industry, and Harvey Weinstein had to go. From the company he founded, from the political left causes he supported, from the stars who remain willfully mute or complicit in Weinstein's deeds. In just a few days, the voices of rage have spread from Hollywood to Broadway to opera. Now, it's too early to say whether this will change the long history of the casting couch, going back to Lumiere, but it does remind us of the lesson Bill Clinton learned. No one, no one, no matter how powerful, is untouchable. And that's the beginning of the Savage Nation. I can ask you this. Why Weinstein? Why now? I'm going to ask you if, if you're up in the wine country to give us firsthand reports of the devastation because the rest of the nation is not getting the picture. For some reason, the people in the national media don't give a damn about you. They do not care about the largest fire in the history of the San Francisco Bay Area since, by the way, the fires that devastated San Francisco in the early 1900s. You don't you do know how big this is. You're talking about thousands of acres burned to the ground. You're talking about people driven out of their houses. What about the livestock and the animals? This is going to have a long-term effect on the nation as well, and I'll tell you why. No one has seen this coming, but I've been thinking about it. Who do you think is going to pay for this devastation? When you say, all oh, the insurance companies. Who are the insurance companies? I will tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a tax raise in this already overtaxed state of California. What is ironic here is that Jerry Brown, who just a week ago or two weeks ago demanded that all the illegal aliens in the state be protected by some stupid laws called making sanctuary state, the whole state, right? Now he's begging Donald Trump, the man he spit on for 10 straight months. 10 months he spits on Donald Trump. 10 months Jerry Brown kicks Donald Trump in the face. For 10 months Jerry Brown mocks Donald Trump. For 10 months Donald Trump tells, uh, uh, Brown tells Trump to drop dead and go to hell. Now he's begging him for federal aid. I don't think the federal government will give him a dime. And what is going to happen is uh, the state of California is going to demand more taxes from those of us in the state who actually produce things and work for a living. And our taxes will go up. I don't know if you know how high they are in this criminal gangster state of mine. I pay 13% state tax on top of 39% federal tax, and no one can take this anymore. I am not a man who owns Facebook. I don't own Microsoft. I don't have the double, triple Irish. I don't have every trick in the book where I take a small salary and let the company pay for everything else and live like a billionaire. It's, cr it's criminal and it's killing us. What's going to happen is the productive citizens of California are going to wind up leaving. All he's going to have left are the illegal aliens. And then what is he going to live What's it, what are they going to live on when the illegal aliens are the only one left in the state? So we can talk about that if you want. I know it's not a big story to most people. It's still Weinstein. Now it says the U.K. police have launched investigations. They don't investigate themselves better. Uh, let's see what else I have for you. U.S. and Israel to quit UNESCO. Megyn Kelly today continues to crash and burn when Signal cuts out mid-interview. It seems like an early... An early uh, television show in New York in the 19, early, early 50s. I remember watching television in the early 50s with my friend Alan. And I used to like to watch TV shows late at night. There was especially a Spanish 
language show called the El Perucho Show. Does anyone remember that one? Any old Hispanic listeners up in Harlem who listen to me? El Perucho. So we used to like to watch it because there was always a disaster of one kind or another. A set would fall over during the show. A woman's dress, honest to God, would sometimes break and, and things would happen right on the set. El Perucho Show. So we were kids, 11 years old. And we'd watch this show to see the gaffes. Well, that's Megan Kelly today. It's the El Perucho. <laughs> it's the El Perucho show of our time, but it's too it's too esoteric a reference for anyone. Uh, California fire is making more pollution than a year of traffic. Disgusted Obamas were starstruck by Hollywood mogul Weinstein's access and cash. You know, it's really a sad story about that because the daughter Malia was uh, worked for Weinstein. I'm sure he wouldn't go near her. I mean, let's be clear. That's a hand, that's the third rail. You know, right? This guy would no. He wouldn't. Are you kidding? Uh, kill a while. Trump raises the possibility of Canada U.S. deal and meeting with Trudeau. Trudeau is a moron. The Canadian Trudeau, the ballerina, is so stupid. He gave a speech uh, yesterday or the day before on, on toxic masculinity. Moron, just morons. Suicidal Harvey Weinstein begs stranger for a ride in L.A. MGM says police timeline of Vegas massacre may not be accurate. Look, I could cover that story, but I will tell you right now, the whole story stinks to high heaven. The whole shooting in Vegas story has fallen apart on the police and the FBI faster than you can see Harvey Weinstein falling from grace. It's not holding up. What else is in the news? Uh, It's all on michaelsavage.com. Mysterious spike of radioactive particles across Europe baffles scientists. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Now, here's an odd one. Boy Scouts to admit girls into Cub Scouts establish new program how can they put girls in a Boy Scout troop? I don't quite get that. I mean, there was a Boy Scout, and then there was a Girl Scout. How can you have a Girl Scout in a Boy Scout troop? Isn't that oxymoronic? That would be like having a Dog Scout. I'm not comparing girls to dogs, don't get me wrong. But either it's the Boy Scouts or it's not the Boy Scouts. If you admit dogs into the Boy Scouts, then it's what? The Dog Scouts or the Boy Dog Scouts or the Dog Boy Scouts? It doesn't make any sense to me, but this is what happens when you have idiots running everything. Meanwhile, we've heard nothing about North Korea. Nothing about North Korea. How did that go away all of a sudden? Oh, yeah, there's another one. You know Jimmy Schimmel, the Knish man on late night television, one of the most talentless hacks to have ever come along. The guy who pretends to be the conscience of late night television. The guy who cries every other day and fakes tears like a crocodile in mourning. There's an old video that shows America's conscience Jimmy Kimmel asking women to grope his crotch. It's too disgusting for me to play the sound on the show, but if my headache increases, I will do so very shortly. This is the phone number here. You know what it is? 855-400-SAVAGE. Although I be choking on ash, I am sure to be here. I wish I could make... Oh, I am sure to be here to make certain we clash. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. They're going to go down for good one of these days. Welcome back. Although I be choking on ash, I will be here to make certain we clash. I stumbled putting it together, but I got it out, didn't I? It was not bad for on the cuff. I mean, I no, I don't have any scripts in front of me. Remember that movie with Robert De Niro, uh, the king of comedy where he ties up Jerry Lewis and takes over his talk show? <laughs> That's funny. That was a great movie. Although I be choking on ash. It's uh, very rough out here right now. I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going to L.A. I know he's like, what? You're going to L.A. for clean air? Yes. Isn't that ironic that I have to flee San Francisco to go to, to Los Angeles for clean air? What people don't know is the air in L.A. is very clean right now as a result of catalytic converters and p- tremendous pollution controls over the last 30 years. I remember when I first went down there, the uh, valley, you couldn't even see into the valley. It was smog-ridden. But now if I I drive on Mulholland Drive, you don't see any smog down in the valley. Rarely. You rarely see smog. There's been great advances in in controlling air pollution in L.A. It's fabulous. Much cleaner than here right now because there's no smoke. This is a nightmare. 
And my, I'm worried about my pet more than I am about me. He's 13 years old. He's not showing any signs, but I mean, you know, figure it out. Every person has a pair of lungs, right? Every living thing breathes. You know, like cars have air intakes and air cleaners. They're going to be clogged. I guarantee you people will take more care of the air cleaners in their new cars than they will over their own lungs. They don't even understand what's going on here. This is a disaster. I feel like I've smoked a carton of cigarettes like Philip Morris since last since last week. I feel like, okay, yeah, hey, Dad, what do you want for your birthday? I only want cigarettes. I give my father like a carton of Philip Morris. But I didn't know that a carton of Philip Morris would speed along the ultimate. I had no idea. I feel like I just smoked a carton of my father's old cigarettes. It's so bad here. KSFO, Sage Line 5, what's on your mind, my friend? Hi, Dr. Savage. I'm actually calling from Los Angeles. Um, you mentioned something about Chinese buyers, how you suspect that they're going to buy up um, that farmland that was burned for cents on the dollar. But we're also facing the same problem all over California. These aren't your typical Chinese citizens. These are oligarchs. You know, they don't earn their money legitimately. Do they're you know how I've gotten reports that there are hundreds, if not more, houses sitting in the wine country that have been purchased over the last number of years by Chinese cartels, and no one lives in the houses. They've been buying up the wine country as it is. I don't know if you know that. Did you? I bet you didn't know that. Obama administration. This also the Obama administration uh, during the bottom of the housing market. Obama passed a law for foreigners to buy up land worth more than five hundred thousand. But the thing with Chinese is that they're starting up pregnancy hotels here in Los Angeles. So they'll buy up an expensive house. So I'll price you know your typical lawyer, doctor who's trying, you know who earned that money legitimately. They'll buy up a house cash. Very expensive. We're talking $3 million. And we'll start up a pregnancy hotel for Chinese women from China. Isn't that nice? Here, get Isn't that nice? Well, I always like Chinese food. Uh, so if there's more Chinese restaurants, I guess that'll be better. I have not yet learned Mandarin. I'm not intending to learn it. I only know a few words, like this food stinks and are you crazy from my many restaurant visits. Where are you living in L.A., by the way? Um, I used to live in Pasadena. That's where, where there's a lot of Chinese buyers, but I live in the valley. So, how's how's the air down there now? Nice and clean. Um, it's actually it's a little smoggy. I go to Pierce College, so I can see the mountains right here. Uh, I can, you know, it's a little smoggy. Yeah, but I have friends who live up on Mulholland. They tell me it's clean up there. Yeah, I mean, but right now, you know, sometimes some days you'll have it where it's smoggy. And yeah, smoggy. I know. I've seen it off and on, but it's it's cleaner than here. Believe me. All right. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone who celebrates the Chinese New Year. That's coming in February. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Wan Shang Hao, welcome back to the Savage Nation. Wan Shang Hao, welcome back to the program. I think I'll study Mandarin, not. Who has the time for that? Just bring a translator with me. It's a tough language. You realize how smart Chinese people are who speak English? I often wonder about that. You know, you laugh sometimes at people who have difficulty with the English language, but try speaking their language for two seconds. My father taught me that. I once laughed at a Spanish-speaking person in my father's store when he left. I was a kid. So he took me aside, he grabbed my arm, and he said, how many words can you speak in his language? That was the end of that mockery. You know, you think about it. Oh, you're maid, you're, you're carpenter, you're, you're God, and he can't speak good English, right? Try speaking to him in Spanish, particularly the Spanish that they speak from the country they come from. Most of these people are bi and trilingual, incidentally. incidentally. I, I mean, I know a guy, he's a nobody, right? You see him, nobody, ripped clothing. And he speaks Mex he speaks uh, Span Mexican Spanish, which is different than Castilian Spanish, obviously. He speaks remarkably uh, good English, but he also speaks Mayan, which is a tough language, if you ever saw the movie Apocalypto. I know you want to talk about Harvey Weinstein and the fires. I get it. I don't know if I care enough about anything anymore. My head is killing me. And here's another story. Just hit Drudge. You know the, the Taliban family that was released, that was captured? Free Taliban hostage won't board plane. Now, the guy who was released with his two kids, which they had while in captivity from the practitioners of the religion of peace, not, is afraid to come back here because he had been married to a woman who was de declared a terrorist, the other woman. Look at this story. This is a crazy story altogether. He's released when the Pakistani special forces go in with U.S. information 
and free him from the Taliban murderers. He's ready to get on a plane to come back home. She there from Canada. He can't come back. He's afraid he'll be arrested here by Homeland Security. Crazy world. You talk about tragedy one after the other. FBI, NYPD, Scotland Yard, Probe Weinstein. He is the face, the face, the face of it. He is the face. It says producer, predator, pariah. If ever somebody was centrally casting someone to look like a, a pariah, it would be Harvey Weinstein. See, he matches the story. That's the thing. I have not seen any allegations of the gay predators of Hollywood. I know I'm not supposed to ask that, but everyone knows there's a lot of men in the entertainment business who prey on younger men. Is that true or am I imagining that? Where are the young men have been preyed upon by men in Hollywood? How come we haven't seen that story yet? Anyone have an answer to that question? See, it's an interesting question that I'm raising because it's probably as prevalent, if not more prevalent, than the other side of the aisle, so to speak. I'll take your calls. And if you want to talk about this, we'll talk about anything you want because that's going to happen. You may be laughing about Weinstein today, but tomorrow, you know, when they came for Weinstein, you didn't raise your voice because you're not Harvey Weinstein. When they came for you, there was no one left to, to back you up because everyone's been, been taken down. Anna on WABC Line 2, what do you make of this whole craziness? Are you talking to me? I hope so. If not, you must be crazy. Who else would I be talking to? Okay. I am a Ph.D. psychologist. I've taught psychology for 20 years at a um, university. All right, so all right, I get it. I'm not negating you, not mocking you. What is your main point, madam? Women use men as much as men use women. All right, let, let's take that on the face of what you just said. You mean that all of these starlets who are saying they were, let's say, abused by Harvey were using him? In the same way that he was using them. I mean, okay, he had a, um, I mean, he was stronger and could do things for them. But yeah, but let's stop for a minute. He had the power over them. He said to the, that girl that we heard on the tape, don't ruin your relationship with me over just five minutes. He was saying to her that if you don't do what I want, you'll never see me again, meaning your career is over. So you can't say it's an, it's an equitable relationship, Anna. Look, th this is what lawsuits are based upon, is the power differential. If they were equals in power, the woman would have a tougher time making such a claim. But in almost every one of these cases, the women made these claims when they were unknown, powerless, uh, you know, starlets, so to speak, who wanted to become something in Hollywood. The casting couch is well known, though. I mean, that's the thing. Should it be there? No. Is it there? Yes. Will it be there as long as there are film? In the film industry, yes. So I don't know that your statement makes much sense because there's a power differential between the two. You know, there's such a thing as consensual relations, obviously. And then this thing is non-consensual. This is non-consensual. That's what it is. Political implications of Chinese and Cal fires. Media trying to save reputation. Well, I don't know. I got a migraine thinking about all of this. Is there another story I should talk about right now? Like I don't know what to talk about that I'm really interested in. Twitter suspends McGowan account. Clinton aides gang up on accuser boyfriend. Eh. Trump, uh, Bannon says Trump has 30% chance of survival, meaning they're going to take him down on the 25th. What, what's this with Bannon turning on Trump all of a sudden? These stories, all of these Bannon stories. Breitbart boss making it harder for Trump to enact his agenda? Who wrote that article? What's this? Daily Beast. Well, the Daily Beast is a liberal outlet, you know. So he's trying, they're trying to get a two-for out of that. By the Daily Beast attacking Bannon, they're getting a double. It's like two-for-one. They're getting two, two bowling pins with one ball. You know, So they're, they're going to believe anything that they write. The Daily Beast, it's owned by a beast, if you look at the ownership of that. What now? Eh, Affleck groping could put Justice League in jeopardy. You know, here's the thing about Affleck. I don't even know his name. Dave, what's Dave Affleck's first name? I'm supposed to know everything. Ben, Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. I think he's a fabulous actor. This is the thing you have to understand is I enjoy his movies. I, I don't know what he does in his regular life. I know that's like saying I like Hitler's watercolors. I get that. I, I am not putting it in the same category. Don't get me wrong. But can't I just go to a movie and watch him be an actor? Or must I sit there and say he did this, he did that, you know, he did this, he did that? You know, Jesus said, you want me to get into that?
Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And I hear a lot of stones flying from people who are not so innocent. That's all I can tell you. You know, be careful now which way the stones are going to fly because they can come right back at you. Affleck groping could put Justice League in jeopardy. I liked Affleck in the movie uh, The Accountant. I thought it was an unbelievable. He was like Asperger's. It was pretty good, pretty good, that movie, The Accountant. I watched it three times. It didn't do very well because it was too intellectual. You had to actually think while you're watching it. And there weren't enough, uh, whatever, I can't, it's a family show. What else do you want to talk about? Evacuations widen as California wildfires spread. Raining ash. No kidding. Then go look at my website. You'll see ash if you think we're making it up. Try breathing that in for a whole night. I'm worried about the dog. Teddy, you okay down there? I don't know. He's small, old dog, 13 years old. What can I do? Get him a mask? Get Teddy an oxygen bottle? What now? I think we should do uh, something else. Vegas shooter, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Grant, KSFO Line 7. What's your topic, Grant? Hi, Michael. Thanks for taking my call. So something that I have not heard being discussed at all was that this guy had been planning this for a decade plus. He had no criminal record, and, and most reality that these knuckleheads deal with is, is money. He had all the money in the world. He could have applied for a, a become a licensed gun dealer. If he got his hands on a weapon, like a 50 cal machine gun, which would go through 15 people before he even slowed down, he could have killed hundreds of people. And it makes me think that he probably just thought of this in the last few years. Maybe he was a gun collector or whatever. But I think that the, the system, the checks and balances as far as getting access to a weapon of real, you know, potential killing ability, he didn't get that. He got something you and I could go to the store, wait a week or two. Well, because many people are alleging that the story doesn't hold water, that the police and the FBI have changed their stories two or three times and that it makes no sense that one man could have re released that much firepower so quickly. And then we learned just two days ago uh, that he released 200 rounds inside the hotel through a door, and he wasn't stopped. And then he, he went on his rampage 10 minutes later. How is that even possible? If you so much as threw a bottle against the wall in a hotel, I can guarantee your hotel security would be inside your door within three minutes. If you took a champagne bottle and threw it against a glass window or you smashed it against your door you're telling me people in adjacent rooms wouldn't have called security you would have been taken out in, in handcuffs in 10 minutes so why was there no reaction to 200 rounds going through his door does that make sense to you no makes no sense to me but i can't talk about it because if i do where am i going to go with that story i don't know where i'm going to go with that story we go to my twitter feed choking on fire smoke Air pollution from fires in wine country may have to flee to Los Angeles for clean air. It's a kind of an ironic statement. I get it. More sarcastic than ironic. People took it literally, you know, people to whatever you do now. Here's a crazy story that I saw that I think I can jump cut to. Not the quake detected in North Korea. Is it another test? We don't know what it is. That we don't know. Someone says collective consciousness to replace God. Now, you know, I have to jump in on that. Collective consciousness to replace God, says some author I never heard of. And he says humanity no longer needs God, but may, but may, with the help of artificial intelligence, develop a new form of collective consciousness that fulfills the role of religion, says a U.S. author. He made the remark at the Frankfurt Book Fair. Okay. Well, he's promoting a new novel. I'm promoting a new book that will be out in a few weeks called God, Faith, and Reason. And I don't believe that we don't need God for a couple of reasons, because AI didn't create uh, mankind. AI did not create the earth. He's completely crazy to believe that. How could he prove that? He can't prove that any more than I can prove that God exists. But there's more belief built into the God thing that are, than there is into AI. Well, we can start worshiping a machine now. Should I worship Mark Zuckerberg's undershirt? Is that what he's implying? We should all like work, get, get an undershirt, a virtual undershirt of of Mark Zuckerberg and worship it in the morning. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? His views may not be welcomed by clerics. Then he says Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all share a gospel. Okay, no kidding. The development of will start to find our spiritual experience through our interconnections with each other. Are you joking? We're gonna have we're gonna have interconnections with people who want to cut our heads off? I don't think so, sir. Some form of global consciousness that we perceive and that becomes our divine. Our need for that exterior God that sits up there and judges us will diminish and eventually disappear. Well, he's got that all wrong. He's not me. He doesn't know God. I do know God.
That's the whole difference between me and him. He's never met God. I don't care how many books he sold, he's never met God. Have I? Well, here's how the answer goes. There's no direct proof, but there's indirect proof. And I'm going to say it once, and I'm going to say it again to all of you cynics out there, then I won't beat you up with the God thing till I'm ready to actually read it. Then you'll see how important this book is because it's the search for God's existence. That's what the whole book is about, God, Faith, and Reason. So what I'm saying to you is this, think about it. Why is it that in the religion of Judaism, the religion of Islam, and the religion fundamentally in, well, in Christianity, there is a belief that you can't see God. Now with Christians, they believe Jesus existed for sure. There's 100% proof in the minds of Christians that Jesus came to earth, he was God's son. I get that. But no one's actually seen God himself, they've seen God's son. Why is it that the monotheistic God is invisible is the primary question that has plagued mankind from the beginning of that, quote, hallucination in the desert. I mean, I've spoken to cynics, poets, paupers, physicists since I'm a child. I've talked to bums. I've talked to preachers. I've talked to fanatics, religious fanatics. I've talked to totally insane people in mental hospitals. And everyone's plagued with the same question, which is, does God exist? It drives men crazy. And if you don't get the answer that you want, it drives you into Hollywood. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, let's talk about energy for one minute. Wouldn't it be great to have all the energy that you want all day long? Well, unfortunately, fatigue often gets in the way. You know that. It seems to get worse every year, doesn't it? And here's why. When you're 20, your body has a natural ability to maintain healthy circulation. But by the time you're 40, that ability decreases by half. That's a medical fact. That leaves you feeling draggy and tired. So what can you do to increase that youthful, natural circulation and fight fatigue? You drink Super Beats. It's a natural product. Super Beats promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. Only Super Beats is made from beets grown to exacting standards, which are then concentrated into superfood crystals. So listen to me. If you want to increase your own natural energy, you go to 1-800-481-0504 or savagelovesbeats.com. With your first order, you're going to get another 30-day supply of Super Beats free. That's two for one. Plus, listen to this, indicator strips to test to see how Super Beats actually works for you. And you get free shipping. It's a great deal. Call 800-481-0504, 800-481-0504, or go to savagelovesbeats.com today. I want to raise the issue up of boy on boy. Corey Feldman opens up about being preyed upon by men as a young actor in Hollywood. This was in the Huff Post, May 26, 2016, by Julia Brucuglieri. And Corey Feldman talked about his experiences with child abuse in the entertainment industry. He was a young actor in the 80s. He was in room, things like The Goonies, Stand By Me, Lost Boys. And he spoke to the Hollywood Reporter about being preyed upon by older men in the industry. Trust me, this is coming very soon. The actor told the magazine that, quote, they would throw these parties where you'd walk in and it would be mostly kids and there would be a handful of adult men. The lure for kids, he said, is that they work in, in the adult world. All of their friends become adults and, they're very, and they very rarely get to interact with other kids because they don't go to school. Oh, they don't go to school? No wonder they sound like Jimmy Kimmel. He said, you don't get that interaction which you crave so badly. So when somebody approaches you and says, hey, this is a Hollywood party, where you get to hang out with the powerful people in Hollywood, well, that sounds like a great opportunity. He spoke about his friend and former Two Corys co-star, Corey Hyam, whom he says was raped at the age of 11 while on a movie set. Hyam then died when he was just 38 in 2010 after struggling with addiction for years. He said, quote, he had more direct abuse from men than I did. With me, there were some molestations, and it did come from several hands, so to speak. But with Corey, he, his was direct rape, whereas mine was not actual rape. It is an ugly and detestable story 
But since the Weinstein story has now blown open the lid on the Hollywood we all knew existed, I'm waiting for the other shoe to fall, which is the testimony of young men who were molested or worse by some of the biggest, richest, most powerful men in Hollywood. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Ni hao ma to all of the real estate speculators visiting us in Northern California. Ni hao ma. Are you enjoying the area, I hope? Weinstein accuser blocked on Twitter. Hmm. Wow. Talk about fair and balanced, Mrs. Twitter. Weinstein accuser blocked on Twitter. So I raised the other question, which I ended the last hour with uh, on the program, which is that of, Men and Boys, the Man-Boy Love Association of Hollywood, which is well-known. I mean, it's not just women who are preyed upon by powerful men. It's boys, and it's odd to me that we haven't had any men come forward who say they were molested when they were boys. So I'm going to open up three lines now. Clint, open up some lines. If you are the victim of an older man who took advantage of you when you were young, in Hollywood, or you are now a victim of someone in Hollywood. I don't want the names because we can't verify. Just speak in general terms about the climate in Hollywood amongst men who prey on boys, because what goes around comes around, and now that one shoe has fallen, the other's about to drop, I can guarantee you. Okay? Mike on WFTL in Florida. Go ahead, please. Yeah, this story came out today on page six, in fact, Uncle Mike, that uh, James Vanderbeek, I guess he was a, a, a young actor on Dawson's Creek series, and he says that he was groped, uh, and uh, and they grabbed him on the behind. And uh, you know, does my, he without mentioning names? Does he name names? No, he doesn't. By rich, powerful men, though, is the title of the article. Well, you're not surprised, are you? Of course not. But in fact, but actually, I think it kind of trivializes it because women go through it. You know. Uh, a thousand yeah, exactly. Times. Women go through it, and we know that, the casting couch, but many people don't understand it applies to boys as well. But, but does it really... And, and so what, what, what I'm getting at here, and it's a very, very touchy little question, is are we ever going to hear about powerful men in Hollywood taking advantage of boys who want to be in the movies? Do you ever think that will see the light of day? I'm not so sure. I have a feeling there's more control over the media than you may imagine. It's a huge story, by the way. Let's go to New York. Joseph on WABC. What do you think of that story? Is there anything to it, or am I inventing it? Well, you're not inventing it, but it doesn't also involve movies. It also could be in the music industry. Uh, All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, go on. Uh, just that there's some big people or names in the music business that have been doing this for years and they're somewhat involved in Hollywood, but, uh, it continues to this day. Young boys. Uh, well, I'm not going to ask you to tell name names because I wouldn't accept it as true. But are you, are you someone who has been, who has been molested in the mu music industry? I'm not, but I've seen young people going into somebody's particular residents they couldn't possibly be there for anything else is that proof it's not but 
and not playing playing tiddlywinks, so people know. Yeah. Well, do you, do you do you think there's a chance of the of, of boys or men coming forward on this? I don't know. I wonder why the boys aren't coming forward. You know, that's another question. Is there a, a psychological reason that, let's say, they'd be grown men by now or boys? Would they be ashamed to say that they that they did? You know, there are some very famous actors. I, I can't name them because you know the legal ramifications. Who are well known right now? They're married with children. They're superstars. They're famous, powerful men. But their careers were started as underwear models, for example, without naming names. And it's well known what happens with underwear models. Uh, I, I think people can figure that one out. If you want to, you know, who am I talking? Don't you can't. I can't. But you, you know. It's well known. It's established. In fact, we should search that. Ryan, do a Google on, on underwear models who became movie stars. See what comes up. See if it's actually in the internet already. Let's see what my horoscope is for the day. I, I know you don't believe in it, but how can I believe in a horoscope and believe in God? Aries, you may be tempted to go on a spree, but you will regret it if you do. You can't solve your problems by throwing money at them. Oh, that's stupid. It has no application to me whatsoever. It's such idiotic. I mean... How could a, a horoscope apply to everyone under a particular <laughs> sign? It's like reading a Chinese fortune cookie and believing in it. And he has coaches, and we know about coaches. Here, John on WABC has a coach story. John, what happened to you? Hey, Dr. Savage. Um, uh, when I was younger, um, you know, I was, like, real athletic. And uh, I was preyed upon by um, an, older, an older man for, um, I mean, I, I guess, he wanted me to, I, I guess he was a coach, and um, I don't know. We, I, I was uh, I was preyed upon when I was younger, and uh, it, I'll never forget it as long as I... Um, well, I, I don't want to exploit your pain. How old were you at the time, John? Um, I, was, I was 15 or 14 or, or so. And what, it was a male coach, I assume? Yeah. Uh, yeah, male coach, and um, I'm 20. What, what, okay, so let's ask you this without going back to what happened and when. Okay. How has it affected you to this day as an adult? Are you married with children? Um, yes, I am married with children. and um, I mean, I would think that I have maybe more of like, um, maybe like a sexual issue, like, not like a sexual issue, but um, I, I, I don't want to get in into like real detail, but I just feel like I'm more like turned on easily now that I, I, I don't know if that's like a weird thing to say, but, um, what do you, what do you mean? Because you were sexualized when you were young. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. 100% exactly. Because you were sexualized when you were young, you're kind of chronically searching for sex. Is that more or less it? Oh, Oh, yeah, like 100%, 100%. And so no matter what you do, no matter who, who you're with, your, your wife, I would assume, you're always hungry for sex. All the time. Mm. And, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll never forget, I'll, I'll never forget the look on the guy's face. Um, you know, it happened in a locker room. It was, he was drinking. It was disgusting. Did he, did you ever tell anyone about it? Um, well, my, oh, my father knew because, um, uh, um, I know there was like a police report filed. Like we ended up going to the court and all of this stuff. And what, in those days they would throw the case out, right? And nothing happened to the coach. Um, actually he did end up doing time. I'm not exactly wow. sure how long, but I remember well, you know, this is not such an unusual story um, of, of, of uh, this kind of thing, you know. I mean, we don't want to make light of it, but I suspect that what I am saying is going to become a national story very soon, as usual, and um, we're going to hear things I don't think we really want to hear. But I want to know why more men or boys have not come forward about molestation in Hollywood, given the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Lisa on WABC, go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, Dr. Savage. Um, the reason that they don't come forward the way girls do is is the shame factor. They just feel they're just more ashamed. Um, 
<laughs> what, boys are more ashamed than girls? Yeah, that they were abused. What, it shows that they're weak, that they, that they, they were too weak to defend themselves? Is that more or less the implication? That, that as well as, you know, if it's a man who did it to them, then they start, you know, then there's like a gay, a gay thing, you know, for mm. straight men who are, who, who don't want that sort of, mm. you know. Lisa, you know. Are, you, are you a therapist of any kind? Yes, I am. Do you, do you encounter some of this in your practice? I would imagine so. Yes, I do. It's very sad. You know, people don't understand that child molestation destroys a person for the rest of their life. There's almost, there's a damage that, that lives with the person forever. Am I correct about that? Absolutely. It affects everything. It affects everything in their life, not just... And, and although they can somewhat learn how to walk, they're always somewhat crippled. That's, that's a good way to put it. Yep. As Freud, and, uh, and as Freud said, if you wake up one day and find out you can only uh, crawl on one leg and one arm then crawl on one leg and one arm because that's all you got. But most people who have been molested as children are never whole. Never. They're, They're never, never whole. And I, I, I mean, it's somewhat related to the Harvey Weinstein story, is it not? This is not so far afield. No, it, it's not. It's about power, too. But, you know, girls feel girls are encouraged to talk about their feelings ever since they're little. And nah. are supposed to be stoic. You know, you don't cry. Whereas girls are encouraged to cry and show their feelings. So then when something like this happens, it's just, you know, multiplied that much more for the boys. You don't talk. Can you can you explain something to me? I'm trying to do this in a dignified fashion. There's an article in the New York paper about a serial subway masturbator the police are hunting for. Can you explain to me, because for the life of me, I do not understand this. How a man finds that exciting to do that, to look at a woman and touch himself? What is that about? I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I haven't had to deal with that. Um, I know. I mean, you're laughing as a therapist because, as a, a person who's not a therapist, I do not understand this. E train nine thirty a.m. when a twenty seven year old woman allegedly spotted him, blah blah blah, as he stared at her. They have his picture. And the, and the guy who did it, they say Manis has an extensive arrest history for similar incidents. In March, Manis was busted three times for exposing himself on the subway. I suppose it could be, you know... Well, I guarantee you the booker for um, the Jimmy Kimmel show is looking for him. <laughs> now, that's the kind of guest would be very good for that, for that crowd. You know, we have a Jimmy Kimmel piece that I'm going to play right now, which is from Comedy Central way back when. Here's the conscience of America, Jimmy Kimmel, showing uh, a part of himself that he thought was buried, that someone dug up from a show called The Man Show. Do we have that ready to go, Jim, before we take our break? Listen to it. It's a little disturbing, but there's a reason for playing it is because he's so self-righteous. He is so damn self-righteous that it's worth outing this guy. Listen to this clip right now. Here's Jimmy Kimmel before he was well-known, before he became a political genius in the following soundbite. I've stuffed something in my pants and you're allowed to feel around on the outside of the pants. You have 10 seconds to then guess what is in my pants. You should use two hands. Two hands. <laughs> Maybe it would be easier if you put your mouth on it. How old are you? 18. Okay, good. You sure of that? Because <laughs> uh, Uncle Jimmy doesn't need to do time. <laughs> you're going to make you're going to make a fine wife. I think I wore the rubber underpants. And your guess you... is? Vibrator. A vibrator? No, it is actually a zucchini with a rubber band on it. <laughs> you can use it as a vibrator if you want. Very funny, Jimmy. Very funny. Very funny. That's real high-end comedy. Takes a lot of creativity. I wonder where the idiot is who wrote that for you. Where is he today? In a mental hospital? Dead? Suicide? Hanging? Unbelievable. You know, I don't know which way to turn listening to these stories anymore. And look what an expert he is on global warming and on women's rights and the third world rights and immigration. You know, this is the beautiful part about Jimmy Kimmel. He's suddenly become an expert in everything political. Did he ever go to school? I, I can't imagine he's educated at any level. He probably has the same level of education as uh, Jonas Schimmel. Or well, he is Jonas Schimmel's. I call him Schimmel for a reason because it, 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 it matches the, the rhyme matches. You know, I heard a soundbite the other day from this guy, Rob Reiner, who was probably one of the most, I, I, there's a word for him, a big, 
blowhard of a schmendrick from Hollywood, a Brooklyn big mouth. He gets up at a Hamptons film festival, and he says, well, they're comparing what uh, Harvey Weinstein did to Donald Trump. He said, it's not a, it's not a moral equivalency. One is the president, and one is not. Well, first of all, Donald Trump never molested anybody, moron. But number two, he then goes into a, a screed on global warming, and he says, they say that there's two sides to every story. Well, when it comes to global warming, there's only one side, and the audience cheers. These are people who are science illiterates. They are absolute illiterates. Unfortunately, they own the media, and I'm short of time. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We're talking about the silent epidemic of molestation in Hollywood uh, amongst uh, men uh, on boys. It's a silent story, and it's odd to me, well, not so odd that it hasn't come out yet. We've had all these women come out and say, and I, I, I believe all of them, by the way, that they had to do certain things to get where they are when they were young and unknown. Okay, that's well known, the casting couch. But doesn't logic dictate that if it applied to young girls, beautiful young girls at that, it would apply to good-looking young boys as well, given the proclivities of humankind, which are not limited to Hollywood, to be very specific? So in other words, where are those stories? The answer is quite clear to me. They're never, you're not going to see many of them because the other side of the aisle has much more control over what you see and what you hear than you may imagine. Yeah, at least that's my opinion. That's my opinion. Now, we can talk about Mandalay Bay. And Robert Downey Jr. says, I've been to that hotel. They have special weapons detectors installed, and there is no way they would have allowed weapons in unless they were cooperating with either a federal law enforcement team or a fake law enforcement team. I didn't know this, but in August, Robert Downey Jr., the Iron Man star, exposed the huge Hollywood network of pedophilia, prostitution, and human trafficking. Now he's tape taking aim at the deep state. He said, did you know there was a FEMA drill taking place in Las Vegas that exact day? And then suddenly it went live, and they didn't even send an emergency response team for hours. And that's why so many people died after being shot. Many more died for lack of proper response. It's an intriguing article by Robert Downey Jr. Yes, it is. So we're talking about why Weinstein, why now? The molestation of boys as well as girls and why we're not hearing about it. Because it's just as prevalent right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I was just sick. I was shocked. I was appalled. Um, it was something that was just intolerable in mm. every way. And, yes, you know, yes. like so you many know. people who have come forward and spoken out, this mm -hmm, was a mm -hmm. different side of a person who uh, I and many others had known uh, in the past. That's Hillary Clinton days later. Now there's a new story that Clinton aides are ganging up on the boyfriend of the Harvey Weinstein accuser. Boyfriend of Harvey Weinstein accuser? Current and former aides of Hillary Clinton ganged up on Anthony Bourdain on Twitter after Bourdain criticized Clinton for her delayed response to the sexual harassment allegations against old Harvey. Clinton received criticism for initially staying silent, blah, blah, blah. Weinstein had donated $1,000 to Clinton. We know that. He maxed out donations to Clinton's failed campaign. Da, 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 da. And the Hollywood mogul had given at least 250 grand to the Clinton Foundation. That's a slush fund in the minds of many people. 
Five days after the initial New York Times story broke amid growing criticism, Clinton released a statement condemning Weinstein, acting so shocked, just shocked. She then conducted an interview with Crazy Eyes on CNN, the guy who has the bug eyes, on Wednesday night, in which the former candidate for president said she would redonate the money she received from Harvey, but did not specify where it would go. No doubt the Clinton Foundation. Now she's going to give it to someone. Anthony Bourdain, host of CNN's Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown, criticized Clinton for her tepid response with several tweets. And, okay, whatever. And what happens next is pretty obvious that those of us who know how it works to know what happens when you cross a river with a scorpion and you know what's coming next. The scorpion always bites you. And then when you say, why did you bite me? The scorpion says, because I'm a scorpion. That's all. Is there anything to one? Is everyone that naive? You don't really know how these things go. So now you got to hear something. You, you don't know why I have sympathy for Harvey Weinstein. It's because he's a human being. I didn't say, well, how dare you? He's a liberal. He stands for everything that you oppose. Because I think the mark of a man is what he feels for his enemies not so much what he feels for his friends. And my religious teachings actually teach me not to take pleasure in the pain even of my enemy in battle. Did you know that? I don't know if you understand how certain religions work. So I'm supposed to laugh at Weinstein. I'm not going to. I think he's a very sick man. I I don't say I feel bad for him. I don't know the man. I'm sure he thought terribly of me. It's an interesting story I could tell you. I don't know if he can sue me for it. Years, I have a friend who's a very famous, a very unknown famous film producer. And he produced two phenomenal um, animated films which were very big. And Harvey Weinstein was his partner. So he went to Harvey Weinstein and said, I want to do a documentary on Michael Savage. This was three or four years ago. And Harvey said, I know who he is. I hate him. I, I detest everything he stands for. But I'm in the business to make money. And if it's a good movie, I'll distribute it. That's what he said to him. I don't know if I could be sued for telling you the truth. So now we have the same guy who was hated by the world coming out of the daughter's house, and TMZ runs clip three. Listen to this. I'm not doing okay. You're not? I'm trying. I got to get help, guys. Sure. You know what? We all make mistakes. Second chance, I hope. Okay? And you know what? I've always been loyal to you guys. Awesome. Not like those <laughs> who treat you like <laughs> I've been the good guy. I don't know what can I say. So now he's appealing to the to the paparazzi. That's the, the, they're really going to not turn on him. I've always been good to you guys, but that's not the point. The point is the guy has fallen from grace faster than anyone I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen a fall like this. You know, the harder they fall. I mean, you have the harder the Jimmy Cliff. The harder they come, the harder they fall. But I asked at the beginning of this show, while I'm going to read you this again, what I wrote at the beginning: Why Harvey Weinstein and why now? We know it began with Bill Clinton. We then saw the trial of Bill Cosby, and we saw the demise of Bill Cosby, and then we saw the swift fall of other men in entertainment, and then we saw the few heroic women who came to the New York Times to take on one man's decades-long abuse, a man who's bullying power in Hollywood, whose fearful personal wrath, whose army of attorneys watching for libel or slander allowed him, meaning Harvey, to become one of the worst offenders. Now, add to that the rising storm of anti-white male sentiment in the film industry, And Harvey Weinstein simply had to go, even from the company he founded, also from the political left-wing causes he supported. They threw him out. From the stars who remained willfully mute or complicit in his deeds all these years. And in just a few days, the voices of rage have spread from Hollywood to Broadway to opera. I do not know if this will change the long history of the casting couch, but it does remind us of the lesson Bill Clinton learned. No one, no matter how powerful, is untouchable. So let's play The Harder They Come, The Harder They Fall. On the the harder they come, the harder they fall. One and all. Ooh, the harder they come, the harder they fall. One and so many of us are celebrating because we know he's a, look, we know Weinstein's a red diaper dopa baby, a left wing fanatic. He never said anything good about America. He's always done anti family, anti church anti-God, anti-everything movies that we stand for. I understand that. He is the enemy of everything we believe in. However, what does it make you if you take pleasure in his fall? 
Does it make you worse than him in a certain way? Does it make you a better person to take pleasure in this fall? In this sense, it's, uh, you know, first of all, it's part of Christianity. I'm not a Christian, but think about what your Christian te- beliefs teach you. The Christian religion is beautiful because it tells you to forgive your enemy. And there's a truth to that, but there's also a wisdom to it. The wisdom is, is that otherwise you will be devoured by hatred. Hatred can devour you faster than flames. It'll devour your soul. I'm a guy who's very quick to anger. I blow up very easily personally. I have a very, very, very hot temper, but I'm quick to forgive. I let it go. It's over. I don't harbor grudges. I will tell you that right now. That's one thing that you can't say about me is I harbor grudges. I don't, or else I would have been poisoned by the grudge. It's something you have to learn. You have to let go of your grudges or they'll eat you alive. It's a cancer. It's like swallowing a cancer pill, a grudge. So what I'm saying is, you know, take a certain amount of pleasure if you want in the fall of Harvey Weinstein, but don't take too much pleasure in it because you don't know who's going to fall tomorrow. This is now a mass hysteria that's occurring. There is a mass hysteria going on to get men. I am not saying he's innocent. I believe the women. I didn't say that at all. But I'm asking why Harvey and why now, and I've answered the question in in certain ways. But tomorrow you're going to hear, or the day after tomorrow, about boys or uh, who are now men who are molested to get where they are. Maybe they won't come forward because they're now, uh, let us say, married with children. They don't want you to know about it. But some guys have already come forward and talked about it. So, uh, the, you know, there's this documentary that Charles on WABC. Charles, what, what did you want to tell the audience? Hey, Dr. Savage. So uh, in, 19, in 2014, there was a documentary released called An Open Secret, directed by Amy Berg. It was released in like two cities in the in the beginning of the movie. She talks about how everyone tried to prevent her from from releasing it. It was you can only see it at the film forum, some dump down way downtown by the Holland Tunnel in New York. <laughs> I love it. So, what is the movie about? Open Secret. It is exactly what you're talking about. It's all about boys, um, and they name names. You probably don't want to repeat them, but um, I read that it was not released to video. Someone had been suing. I'll say Brian Singer, he's the one named in the movie um, publicly, um, and whoever was suing him. So you're saying that they actually named which boys said they were molested in Hollywood? They interviewed interviewed Todd Bridges, they interviewed, um, um, what's his name, Uh, the kid who was uh, with River. Well, we don't have to name the name, so you can see this on the internet, right, Open Secret? Two hours, it's deep, it's disturbing, um, but it's exactly what you're talking about. And it well, wait, you're not talking, there's no graphic s- pictures, right? They just say what was done to them. Uh, no, well, there's, there's there's a couple people went to jail in the movie. There's no graphic pictures, but there's a lot of, of, of you know, from personal collections, still photos and pictures of hubs and things that'll make your skin crawl. Oh, my God. Well, Charles, how long do you think it's going to take for America to see the stories of the boys who were molested in Hollywood? Do you think we'll ever see it? I hope so. It's disgusting, it's disturbing, and it needs to stop, so I hope so. All right, thank you. I mean, it's a big story. I don't know if you're going to see it, though. You know? Okay, so Weinstein is now the face of evil. It's the face of evil. He has a face built for the story. I mean, if ever a face matched a story, it's Harvey Weinstein. There's almost no redemption in the man's face. There's no redeeming qualities in his face. He just looks like, like, you know, what they're accusing him of. It's that simple. So that's another reason it's taken hold. You know, what did McLuhan say back in the 60s? The medium is the message. Well, the picture is the message, too. This guy has a punim for this particular story. So Time Magazine's new cover, it's on Drudge, producer, predator, pariah, they say. Unbelievable. And, and then the other article, has anyone fallen faster than Harvey Weinstein by the L.A. Times? And think about that. That's the L.A. Times forced out of his own company? Just from allegations of sexual harassment? Just from allegations. One might say it's among the most stunning falls from grace, they write. But the word grace has rarely been used when Harvey Weinstein is concerned. In one week, in one week, gone. Gone with the wind. So where it ends, nobody knows. Round and round it goes. Where it ends, nobody knows. He was cherished as a brash outsider from Queens, New York. He built this uh, business of his out of nothing, as did many people. But he engaged in behavior along the way in his business. That's the whole point. See, this is the thing you have to understand. It's not as though he engaged in this behavior outside of his field 
of enterprise. He preyed upon the people in his field of enterprise, which is, you know, something else. Fledgling actresses, casting couch. Okay, we all know about it, you know. But why are we hearing so much about it? Why is this such a big deal? David on KSFO, line three, go ahead, please. Hey, Dr. Savage. Um, my brother is uh, an actor and uh, model in Los Angeles, and he told me um, he started doing some underwear modeling um, briefly, no pun intended, but um, it didn't last long. He said the whole scene is so creepy, and they told him, they took him out to dinner, told him we're going to make you money, fly to New York, but these guys were hitting on him the whole time. And he said it's, it's pretty clear to move up in that industry what you got to do, and he just wasn't having it. Let me ask you something. Who do you think would be a photographer who, f- who films boys in underwear? <laughs> and you, do you think he would be a church-going family man? I mean, fill in the blank. Who would be drawn to becoming a photographer, a model, a photographer of young boy models in underwear? I don't think he would be a church-going family man. Let's put it to you that way. You know, if ever there was a story about family values, it's this one. And the accusations have only just begun, believe me. Only just begun. Now, before I take my break, I do have to tell you something about your car. Because, you know, look, everyone knows if you have a used car, sooner or later it's going to break down. It's a fact every car, truck, and SUV owner knows it happens. Now, if you're lucky, it's going to happen while you're still under the manufacturer's warranty and the repairs are covered. But what if it happens after the warranty expires? You could be out of pocket thousands to get it fixed. That's why I recommend getting extended coverage from carshield.com. A new engine, new tranny, $5,000 minimum. Even a simple repair today to a sensor could cost over a thousand bucks. Skip that hassle. Car Shield makes the whole process easy. You simply select your own mechanic, or you can even go to the dealership to do the work, and you don't have to wait for a check in the mail or a reimbursement. Car Shield gets the mechanic paid directly. That's a big deal. In fact, Car Shield's administrators even give you the VIP treatment, providing twenty four seven roadside assistance, and a rental car while yours is in the shop, so you're not left stranded in the cold. So listen to me, if your car is 3 to 12 years old, it doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. Car Shield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims, and they're on the level and they're ready to help you. Save yourself thousands of potential car repairs, get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle service protection before it's too late. All you have to do is call 800-CAR-6100, code SAVAGE. That's simple. Did you hear me? 800 car 6100 mentioned Savage or visit carshield.com. Again, code Savage, and you will save 10%. You got it? That's carshield.com, code Savage. A deductible may apply. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. You know, it's like for whom the bell tolls, the bell tolls for thee. Uh, everyone's taking pleasure in the fall of Weinstein because they think it's related to him. But let me tell you something. There's a bit of Harvey Weinstein in most men. And this is not a time to be vindictive. And I'm going to use this as a teaching moment. You know that my book, God, Faith, and Reason, is coming out in about a month. That book is sprinkled with biblical verses. Every page has a quote, direct quote out of the Bible. Although it is a non-religious book in one sense, It's about one man's search for meaning and for the presence of God. I actually have direct quotes from the the, uh, Old Testament. So let me tell you something. Christians know in verses 17 and 18 a warning against vindictiveness in Matthew 5, 4, uh, which almost approaches the great maxim from Christian Bible, "Love, love your enemies. But there's another one, verse 17, rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. It's interesting for those of you who know this, thou shalt love thy neighbor was actually a mosaic precept out of the Old Testament, Leviticus 19.18. Thou shalt love thy neighbor was a mosaic precept, mosaic meaning Jewish, of course. And so it's important for you to understand that you can take pleasure and gloat over Harvey's fall, but you do so at your own risk. Morte repentina noli godere malorum. Look it up. Basically, what I'm telling you is watch out because you don't know what's coming tomorrow. Don't 
gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice because it's going to make you a worse person, number two. And it's very important that you hear me on this. My book, God, Faith, and Reason, has attempted, and I hope it's achieving that, I can't promise it does, to elevate and to lift up, not to denigrate and pull down. It is right now number one amongst um, religious books. I don't know if you know that, with almost zero promotion. Zero. No ink whatsoever. On Amazon, it's number one amongst religious books with no publicity. I would ask you to check it out at Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com, and I would ask you to buy copies in advance if you're intending to buy that book, because every purchase before the pub date of November 14th will count towards the first week, and if you want to see the word God on the New York Times list, <laughs> if you want to see the word God on the New York Times book list, go, go for it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. It's uh, very rough out here right now. I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm going to L.A. I know he's like, what? You're going to L.A. for clean air? Yes. Isn't that ironic? that I have to flee San Francisco to go to, to Los Angeles for clean air. What people don't know is the air in L.A. is very clean right now as a result of catalytic converters and p- tremendous pollution controls over the last 30 years. I remember when I first went down there, the uh, valley, you couldn't even see into the valley. It was smog-ridden. But now if I, r- I drive on Mulholland Drive, you don't see any smog down in the valley. Rarely. You rarely see smog. There's been great advances in, in controlling air pollution in L.A. It's fabulous. Much cleaner than here right now because there's no smoke. This is a nightmare, and my, I'm worried about my pet more than I am about me. He's 13 years old. He's not showing any signs, but, I mean, you know, figure it out. Every person has a pair of lungs, right? Every living thing breathes. You know, like cars have air intakes and air cleaners. They're going to be clogged. I guarantee you people will take more care of the air cleaners in their new cars than they will over their own lungs. They don't even understand what's going on here. This is a disaster. I feel like I've smoked a carton of cigarettes like Philip Morris since last since last week. I feel like, okay, yeah, hey, Dad, what do you want for your birthday? I only want cigarettes. I give my father like a carton of Philip Morris. But I didn't know that a carton of Philip Morris would speed along the ultimate. I had no idea. I feel like I just smoked a carton of my father's old cigarettes. It's so bad here. Uh, let's see what else I have for you. U.S. and Israel to quit UNESCO. Megan Kelly today continues to crash and burn when Signal cuts out mid-interview. It's, it seems like an early... An early uh, television show in New York in the 19, early, early 50s. I remember watching television in the early 50s with my friend Alan. And I used to like to watch TV shows late at night. There was especially a Spanish language show called the El Perucho Show. Does anyone remember that one? Any old Hispanic listeners up in Harlem who listen to me? El Perucho. So we used to like to watch it because there was always a disaster of one kind or another. A set would fall over during the show. A woman's dress, honest to God, would sometimes break and, and things would happen right on the set. El Perucho show. So we were kids, 11 years old. And we'd watch this show to see the gaffes. Well, that's Megan Kelly today. It's the El Perucho. <laughs> it's the El Perucho show of our time. But it's too it's too esoteric a reference for anyone. Disgusted Obamas were starstruck by Hollywood mogul Weinstein's access and cash. You know, it's really a sad story about that because the daughter Malia was uh, worked for Weinstein. I'm sure he wouldn't go near her. I mean, let's be clear. That's a hand. That's the third rail. You know, right? This guy wouldn't. No, he wouldn't. Are you kidding? Uh, kill a while. Trump raises the possibility of Canada-U.S. deal and meeting with Trudeau. Trudeau is a moron. The Canadian Trudeau, the ballerina, is so stupid. He gave a speech uh, yesterday or the day before on, on toxic masculinity. Moron. Just morons. Suicidal Harvey Weinstein begs stranger for a ride in L.A. 
MGM says police timeline of Vegas massacre may not be accurate. Look, I could cover that story, but I will tell you right now, the whole story stinks to high heaven. The whole shooting in Vegas story has fallen apart on the police and the FBI faster than you can see Harvey Weinstein falling from grace. It's not holding up. What else is in the news? Uh, it's all on michaelsavage.com. Mysterious spike of radioactive particles across Europe baffles scientists. That's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Now, here's an odd one. Boy Scouts to admit girls into Cub Scouts establish new program. How can they put girls in a Boy Scout troop? I don't quite get that. I mean, there was a Boy Scout, and then there was a Girl Scout. How can you have a Girl Scout in a Boy Scout troop? Isn't that oxymoronic? That would be like having a Dog Scout. I'm not comparing girls to dogs, don't get me wrong. But either it's the Boy Scouts or it's not the Boy Scouts. If you admit dogs into the Boy Scouts, then it's what? The Dog Scouts or the Boy Dog Scouts or the Dog Boy Scouts? It doesn't make any sense to me, but this is what happens when you have idiots running everything. Meanwhile, we've heard nothing about North Korea. Nothing about North Korea. How did that go away all of a sudden? Oh, yeah, there's another one. You know Jimmy Schimmel, the Knish man on late night television, one of the most talentless hacks to have ever come along. The guy who pretends to be the conscience of late night television. The guy who cries every other day and fakes tears like a crocodile in mourning. There's an old video that shows America's conscience Jimmy Kimmel asking women to grope his crotch. It's too disgusting for me to play the sound on the show. Now, I want to ask you a question, which is this. Why Harvey Weinstein and why now? There's an article in today's L.A. Times, Has Anyone Fallen Faster Than Harvey Weinstein? It says, in less than a week, the mounting scandal over allegations of sexual harassment and assault has rapidly consumed the once powerful film mogul and the entertainment industry as a whole. Uh, we all know about that. But I'm asking why so fast and why so high? Let's begin with uh, clip 03. Here's Mr. Weinstein himself coming out of, I don't know, his daughter's house where they just had an incident. And he tries to appeal to the vermin, the paparazzi in clip 3. Listen to this. I'm not doing okay. You're not. I'm trying. I got to get help, guys. You know what? We all make mistakes. Second chance, I hope. Okay? And you know what? I've always been loyal to you guys. Awesome. Not like those you like, I've been a good guy. Okay, he's a good guy, and he's uh, made a mistake for the last 30 years. But the question is, why Harvey Weinstein and why now? And I'm going to tell you something. Be very careful, all of, the, all of you who may be conservatives and gloating over Weinstein's fall, because it's not going to be limited to Weinstein. You see, the last few years have seen climate change, and not the kind that the Democrats believe in. No, no, not that kind at all, my friends. There's been a climate change of attacks on white males, on black males, in other words, on males. The trial of Bill Cosby and the accusations against the iconic comedian opened the window about the sexual predation by powerful men. Cosby's demise and the swift fall of other men in entertainment encouraged an heroic few women to talk to the New York Times to take on one man's decades-long abuse, a man whose bullying power in Hollywood, whose fearful personal wrath, whose army of attorneys watching for libel or slander allowed him to become one of the worst offenders. Now add to that the rising storm of anti-white male sentiment in the film industry, and Harvey Weinstein had to go. From the company he founded, from the political left causes he supported, from the stars who remain willfully mute or complicit in Weinstein's deeds. In just a few days, the voices of rage have spread from Hollywood to Broadway to opera. Now, it's too early to say whether this will change the long history of the casting couch going back to Lumiere, but it does remind us of the lesson Bill Clinton learned. No one, no one, no matter how powerful, is untouchable. Here's the thing. A lot of these people don't want to change. There's something you don't know is that he's going to come out and he may not want to change. He may like the demon. It could be the, the Harvey's demon that made him successful. Did you ever think of that? Look at his movies. Look at the, the violent, sleazy movies he made, as artful as they may be. Who do you think was whispering in the ear of the director, the actors? It was Harvey's demon. 
It was not it was not Miriam and Max. Miriam and Max, the Miramax production name comes from his parents, by the way, Miramax. You probably know that. Do you think his ordinary middle class parents, Miriam and Max, uh think the way Harvey does? I kinda doubt it. They come from another world. So look, I, I know that this Weinstein story is overtaking many other stories, and I don't know uh if it's of any interest to anybody, but I think that the the Vegas story is a far bigger story to me because here is the biggest mass slaughter in U.S. history and is already swept under the rug, number one. Then you have a fire that is still raging out of control in Napa, Sonoma. 1,500 homes have been burned to the ground. Thousands of people are displaced. Many have been killed, livestock dead, vineyards wiped out, farmland decimated, and a non-story to the rest of America. What does that tell you? about a nation that's more interesting than an old fat guy showering in front of a, a, a starlet. What does that tell you about a nation? I mean, what does it tell you? We're more interested in an old fat guy in a shower than we are in in the decimation of Napa and Sonoma. It's just the way it is. The world is crazy. I know that. So I, I'm doing the best I can, boys and girls of the savage nation. We have to play Lindsay Lohan. Who, who defends Harvey Weinstein. As you know, she's a superb example of uh, morality and the moral compasses, the sharpest in the business. Let us hear what she has to say on Twitter. Uh, this is Lindsay Lohan defending Harvey. Um, hi, I'm in Dubai. I'm home. Uh, I feel very bad for Harvey Weinstein right now. I don't think it's right what's going on. Uh, I think Georgina needs to take a stand and be there for her husband. And he's never harmed me or done anything wrong to me. And we've done several movies together. And so I think everyone needs to stop. I think it's wrong. So stand up. What's the accent? Like a French-Canadian accent all of a sudden. It sounds like she's from Montreal all of a sudden. Quebecois. All of a sudden she went into another. Well, these people are whack jobs. I mean, very few of them. Are, I mean, the only guy probably who has some sanity is a guy like uh, Tom Hanks. Because he grew up in a normal family. And uh, a real working class family. His mother was a waitress, and he comes from a, a regular background. And maybe he's saying, I don't know, I, I don't know who else. Comes from a tough background, and he made so much out of his life. And he always plays like the hero, which I guess he is in a way. He's considered what America's, what is he, what's Tom Hanks called? I think he's called something nice, which is good. A Hollywood's most decent fellow. But he hates Trump. How that happens, I'll never understand. How they save their hatred for Trump, I never saw anything like this. Why do they all hate him so much? Can anyone tell me what Trump has done is so bad? I still can't figure it out. What has he actually done other than beat Hillary Clinton, upset the apple cart? Has he actually done anything that's wrong to anybody? I uh, I know everyone's making a play of this Eminem song, which is such stupidity. Eminem is a complete phony. He cuts another so-called rap record, a white rapper, and he's surrounded by black guys. And the rap song panders to the black audience, which buys his stuff, where he says that he wants to send them back to Africa. You know Trump never said that. You know Trump doesn't mean that. And yet they're making a big deal out of this jerk's music, you know. So they're all in on this, this uh, hyperbole and insanity. And you know what? Enough is enough. Enough is enough with the Trump bashing. The world is in such trouble. The last thing we need now is to keep tearing a president down because all it's going to do is tear America down. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Or another story you know the the taliban family that was released that was captured free taliban hostage won't board plane now the guy who was released with his two kids which they had while in captivity from the practitioners of the religion of peace not is afraid to come back here because he'd been married to a woman who was de declared a terrorist the other woman look at this story this is a crazy story altogether he's released when the pakistani special forces go in with u.s information and free him from the Taliban murderers. 
He's ready to get on a plane to come back home. She, they're from Canada. He can't come back. He's afraid he'll be arrested here by Homeland Security. Crazy world. You talk about tragedy one after the other. FBI, NYPD, Scotland Yard, Probe Weinstein. He is the face, the face, the face of it. He is the face. It says producer, predator, pariah. If ever somebody was centrally casting someone to look like a, a pariah, it would be Harvey Weinstein. See, he matches the story. That's the thing. I have not seen any allegations of the gay predators of Hollywood. I know I'm not supposed to ask that, but everyone knows there's a lot of men in the entertainment business who prey on younger men. Is that true, or am I imagining that? Where are the young men who have been preyed upon by men in Hollywood? How come we haven't seen that story yet? Anyone have an answer to that question? See, it's an interesting question that I'm raising because it's probably as prevalent, if not more prevalent, than the other side of the aisle, so to speak. You may be laughing about Weinstein today, but tomorrow, you know, when they came for Weinstein, you didn't raise your voice because you're not Harvey Weinstein. When they came for you, there was no one left to, to back you up because everyone's been, been taken down. Political implications of Chinese and Cal fires, media trying to save reputation. Of, I don't know. I got a migraine thinking about all of this. Is there another story I should talk about right now? Like, I don't know what to talk about that I'm really interested in. Twitter suspends McGowan account. Clinton aides gang up on accuser boyfriend. Eh. Trump, uh, Bannon says Trump has 30% chance of survival, meaning they're going to take him down on the 25th. What, what's this with Bannon turning on Trump all of a sudden? These stories, all of these Bannon stories. Breitbart boss making it harder for Trump to enact his agenda. Who wrote that article? What's this? Daily Beast. Well, the Daily Beast is a liberal outlet, you know. So he's trying, they're trying to get a two for out of that. By the Daily Beast attacking Bannon, they're getting a double. It's like two for one. They're getting two... Two bowling pins with one ball, you know. So they're, they're going to believe anything that they write. The Daily Beast, it's owned by a beast, if you look at the ownership of that. Someone says collective consciousness to replace God. Now, you know I have to jump in on that. Collective consciousness to replace God, says some author I never heard of. And he says humanity no longer needs God, but may, but may with the help of artificial intelligence, develop a new form of collective consciousness that fulfills the role of religion, says a U.S. author. He made the remark at the Frankfurt Book Fair. Okay. Well, he's promoting a new novel. I'm promoting a new book that will be out in a few weeks called God, Faith, and Reason. And I don't believe that we don't need God for a couple of reasons. Because AI didn't create uh, mankind. AI did not create the earth. And he's completely crazy to believe that. How could he prove that? He can't prove that any more than I can prove that God exists. But there's more belief built into the God thing than there, than there is into AI. Well, we can start worshiping a machine now. Should I worship Mark Zuckerberg's undershirt? Is that what he's implying? We should all like work, get, get an undershirt, a virtual undershirt of, of Mark Zuckerberg and worship it in the morning. What is he talking about? What is he talking about? His views may not be welcomed by clerics. Then he says Christianity, Judaism, and Islam all share a gospel. Okay, no kidding. The development of will start to find our spiritual experience through our interconnections with each other. Are you joking? We're gonna have we're gonna have interconnections with people who want to cut our heads off. I don't think so, sir. Some form of global consciousness that we perceive and that becomes our divine. Our need for that exterior God that sits up there and judges us will diminish and eventually disappear. Well, he's got that all wrong. He's not me. He doesn't know God. I do know God. That's the whole difference between me and him. He's never met God. I don't care how many books he sold, he's never met God. Have I? Well, here's how the answer goes. There's no direct proof, but there's indirect proof. Everyone's plagued with the same question, which is, does God exist? It drives men crazy. And if you don't get the answer that you want, it drives you into Hollywood. Savage. Here in the Bay Area of California, where I broadcast from, you say, ah, who cares? I don't want to hear about the fires. You will hear about the fires. Not because merely the fact that I, your favorite talk show host, or you wouldn't be listening to me if I were not, I am choking to death. We have white ash falling for four straight days. I know it's nothing compared to those who died or had their houses and possessions burned or seen their spouses burned to death 
up in the wine country. But to me, it's pretty devastating since I moved to the Bay Area in 1974 primarily for one reason, and that was clean air. I fled New York because I was living in Forest Hills, New York at the time, up in Rigo Park, as a matter of fact, and ash used to fall out of the sky every day from the incinerators that were used in the apartment buildings. If you can believe it, back in the 60s, apartments in New York were allowed to burn garbage in their incinerators, and ash would fall all over the area on your car and your nose. No one paid attention to it, but I knew I would die if I had stayed there, or I would look like Anthony Weiner. In either case, I left. I left for cleaner air, and here I am, and the only thing that I really like here is the air. Well, now the air is gone, and I tweet, in case you think I'm bell- bellyaching about something that's not important, you know, do me a favor. Let's see if it's even up on michaelsavage.com yet because you've got to look at this picture if you could see it. I think it's a big deal because you've got to understand the ramifications. Here it is, raining ash choking on wine country fires. Go to uh, michaelsavage.com. Say, well, what's the point? Well, what's the point? It's going to take a minimum of a decade for the San Francisco Bay Area, mainly the wine country, to recover from this fire. Real estate values are going to plummet, and I'll tell you right now, mark my words, the sharks are already moving in to buy 10 cents on the dollar. And don't be surprised if you wake up and find out in a few years from now that the Chinese bought thousands of acres in the wine country uh, for their own personal gain. Yeah, and when I say Chinese, of course, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? China, 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 China. They own huge swaths of our farmland. They're going to move in and buy a lot of the vineyard land, uh, as, as you could imagine. For some reason, the people in the national media don't give a damn about you. They do not care about the largest fire in the history of the San Francisco Bay Area since, by the way, the fires that devastated San Francisco in the early 1900s. You you do know how big this is. You're talking about thousands of acres burned to the ground. You're talking about people driven out of their houses. What about the livestock and the animals? This is going to have a long-term effect on the nation as well, and I'll tell you why. No one has seen this coming, but I've been thinking about it. Who do you think is going to pay for this devastation? When you say, oh, the insurance companies. Who are the insurance companies? I will tell you what's going to happen. There's going to be a tax raise in this already overtaxed state of California. What is ironic here is that Jerry Brown, who just a week ago or two weeks ago demanded that all the illegal aliens in the state be protected by some stupid laws called making sanctuary state, the whole state, right? Now he's begging Donald Trump, the man he spit on, for 10 straight months. 10 months he spits on Donald Trump. 10 months Jerry Brown kicks Donald Trump in the face. For 10 months Jerry Brown mocks Donald Trump. For 10 months Donald Trump tells, uh, uh, Brown tells Trump to drop dead and go to hell. Now he's begging him for federal aid. I don't think the federal government will give him a dime. And what is going to happen is uh, the state of California is going to demand more taxes from those of us in the state who actually produce things and work for a living. And our taxes will go up. I don't know if you know how high they are in this criminal gangster state of mine. I pay 13% state tax on top of 39% federal tax, and no one can take this anymore. I am not a man who owns Facebook. I don't own Microsoft. I don't have the double, triple Irish. I don't have every trick in the book where I take a small salary and let the company pay for everything else and live like a billionaire. It's cr- it's criminal and it's killing us. What's going to happen is the productive citizens of California are going to wind up leaving. All he's going to have left are the illegal aliens. And then what is he going to live? What's it, what are they going to live on when the illegal aliens are the only one left in the state? We'll go to my Twitter feed, choking on fire smoke. Air pollution from fires in wine country may have to flee to Los Angeles for clean air. It's a kind of an ironic statement, I get it. More sarcastic than ironic. People took it literally, you know, people, to whatever you do now. Here's a crazy story that I saw that I think I can jump cut to. Not the quake detected in North Korea is it another test. We don't know what it is. That we don't know. What now? Eh. Affleck groping could put Justice League in jeopardy. You know, here's the thing about Affleck. I think he's a fabulous actor. This is the thing you have to understand is I enjoy his movies. I I don't know what he does in his regular life. I know that's like saying I like Hitler's watercolors. I get that. I am not putting it in the same category. Don't get me wrong. But can I just go to a movie and watch him be an actor? Or must I sit there and say he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that? You know, Jesus said, you want me to get into that? Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. 
And I hear a lot of stones flying from people who are not so innocent. That's all I can tell you. You know, be careful now which way the stones are going to fly because they can come right back at you. Affleck groping could put Justice League in jail. I liked Affleck in the movie uh, The Accountant. I thought it was an unbelievable. He was like Asperger's. It was pretty good, pretty good, that movie, The Accountant. I watched it three times. It didn't do very well because it was too intellectual. You had to actually think while you're watching it, and there weren't enough, uh, whatever. I can't, it's a family show. What else do you want to talk about? Evacuations widen as California wildfires spread. Raining ash. No kidding. Then go look at my website. You'll see ash if you think we're making it up. Try breathing that in for a whole night. You know, we have a Jimmy Kimmel piece that I'm going to play right now, which is from Comedy Central way back when. Here's the conscience of America, Jimmy Kimmel, showing uh, a part of himself that he thought was buried that someone dug up from a show called The Man Show. Do we have that ready to go, Jim, before we take our break? Listen to it. It's a little disturbing, but there's a reason for playing it is because he's so self-righteous. He is so damn self-righteous that it's worth outing this guy. Listen to this clip right now. Here's Jimmy Kimmel before he was well-known, before he became a political genius in the following soundbite. I've stuffed something in my pants, and you're allowed to feel around on the outside of the pants. You have 10 seconds to then guess what is in my pants. You should use two hands. Two hands. <laughs> Maybe it would be easier if you put your mouth on it. How old are you? 18. Okay, good. You sure of that? <laughs> Because uh, Uncle Jimmy doesn't need to do time. <laughs> you're going to make, make a fine wife. I think I wore the rubber underpants. And your guess is? Vibrator. A vibrator? No, it is actually a zucchini with a rubber band on it. Very funny, Jimmy. Very funny. Very good. That's real high-end comedy. Takes a lot of creativity. I wonder where the idiot is who wrote that for you. Where is he today? In a mental hospital? Dead? Suicide? Hanging? Unbelievable. You know, I don't know which way to turn listening to these stories anymore. And look what an expert he is on global warming and on women's rights and the third world rights and immigration. You know, this is the beautiful part about Jimmy Kimmel. He's suddenly become an expert in everything political. Did he ever go to school? I, I can't imagine he's educated at any level. He probably has the same level of education as uh, Jonas Schimmel. Or he is Jonas Schimmel's. I call him Schimmel for a reason because it, 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 it matches the, the rhyme matches. You know, I heard a soundbite the other day from this guy, Rob Reiner, who was probably one of the most, it, I, I, there's a word for him, a big blowhard of a schmendrick from Hollywood, a Brooklyn big mouth. He gets up at a Hamptons film festival, and he says, well, they're comparing what uh, Harvey Weinstein did to Donald Trump. He said, it's not a, it's not a moral equivalency. One is the president and one is not. Well, first of all, Donald Trump never molested anybody, moron. But number two, he then goes into a, a screed on global warming, and he says, they say that there's two sides to every story. Well, when it comes to global warming, there's only one side, and the audience cheers. These are people who are science illiterates. They are absolute illiterates. Unfortunately, they own the media. I want to raise the issue up of boy on boy. Corey Feldman opens up about being preyed upon by men as a young actor in Hollywood. This was in the Huff Post, May 26, 2016, by Julia Brucuglieri. And Corey Feldman talked about his experiences with child abuse in the entertainment industry. He was a young actor in the 80s. He was in room, things like The Goonies, Stand By Me, Lost Boys. And he spoke to the Hollywood Report about being preyed upon by older men in the industry. Trust me, this is coming very soon. The actor told the magazine that, quote, they would throw these parties where you'd walk in and it would be mostly kids and there would be a handful of adult men. The lure for kids, he said, is that they work in, ad in the adult world. All of their friends become adults and, they're ver and they very rarely get to interact with other kids because they don't go to school. Oh, they don't go to school? No wonder they sound like Jimmy Kimmel. He said, you don't get that interaction which you crave so badly. So when somebody approaches you and says, hey, this is a Hollywood party, where you get to hang out with the powerful people in Hollywood, well, that sounds like a great opportunity. He spoke about his friend and former Two Corys co-star, Corey Hyam, whom he says was raped at the age of 11 while on a movie set. Hyam then died when he was just 38 in 2010 after struggling with addiction. 
for years. He said, quote, he had more direct abuse from men than I did. With me, there were some molestations, and it did come from several hands, so to speak. But with Corey, he, his was direct rape, whereas mine was not actual rape. It is an ugly and detestable story. But since the Weinstein story has now blown open the lid on the Hollywood we all knew existed, I'm waiting for the other shoe to fall, which is the testimony of young men who were molested or worse by some of the biggest, richest, most powerful men in Hollywood. Be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. talking about, uh, of course, the fall of the powerful, the mighty in Hollywood. We're talking about the disaster in uh, the wine country. There's a financial disaster for the wine country. Talk about finances alone for at least 10 years by all estimates. This is not going to end tomorrow, but it's not a national story for reasons I cannot understand. MGM says police timeline of Vegas massacre may not be accurate. They're lying about it from top to bottom. But I want to take a few quick calls before my show comes to an end today on the Savage Nation. Again, if you want to get in on a quick last call, the phone number is 855 But before we get to that, you've got to see the demagogues at work. Here's Co- Governor Jerry Brown, who knows better, taking a shot, using the tragedy of the fires to push the left-wing agenda of global warming. Listen to clip 01. Jim, play that one, please. Well, you've heard, heard the story here. Profoundly serious fire. We've had uh, big fires in the past. This is one of the biggest, most serious. It's not over. So uh, that's the way it is uh, with a warming climate and dry weather and reducing moisture. Uh, These kind of catastrophes have happened. They'll continue to happen. And we have to be prepared to do everything we can uh, to mitigate. Yeah, what he means is give me more money for the scam so that people in California in the Senate and Congress whose brother-in-laws own solar mills in Nevada can make more money. That's what he means. Let's take some calls uh, on the program. You know, to use a tragedy like this for personal gain is sickening. And, uh, you know, what's even more alarming is Jerry Brown was, he was spitting in Trump's face like all the Dems were for 10 months. Now he's out with a begging cup, begging Trump for federal funds to pay for this natural disaster in uh, in the wine country. I don't think Trump's going to give him 10 cents. Where will that leave Jerry Brown? Will he ask the illegal aliens to pay their fair share, to stop sending $50 billion a year home to their home countries tax-free? Will he suddenly say, well, well, maybe we should do what that talk show host said two years ago, that guy Savage, when he said, why don't you tax all outgoing money out of California? Every Western Union wiring of money to Mexico or any other other countries down there, buy a non-citizen should be taxed 10% because they're evading taxes. Maybe it's time to do that, Jerry. Every outgoing Western Union to Mexico, El Salvador, Nicaragua, or any other foreign country for that matter. In other words, your constituency, paying no taxes, sending money to their relatives tax-free. Why don't you tax it when it's sent out of the state Jerry, that might pay for the wine country, because I'll tell you something right now, Jerry. If you think you're going to tax the middle class here anymore, you're mistaken. We'll all leave. You'll have nothing left. You'll have retirees, illegal aliens, and prisoners. That'll be the great state of California under the hands of the Democrats. Tammy, uh, KSFO Line 7, what's on your mind? Pleasure to speak with you, sir. Um, Your question, why Weinstein, why now? In my humble opinion, this is a simple case of the tail wagging the dog. There are way too many questions about Vegas that they don't want to answer. And the solution is to divert the public's attention, give them something else to talk about. Well, when you say they, you mean the media moguls. The moguls is bigger than Harvey. I mean, the moguls in the news business bigger than Harvey Weinstein. We've all heard about the casting couch for 40, 50 years that I know of. That's right. Now is Weinstein is the sacrificial lamb that they threw under the bus to divert your attention from Vegas. 
Well, what is the true story of Vegas? MGM says police timeline of the Vegas massacre may not be accurate. We all know it's not accurate. It's a complete lie. How could a man fire 200 rounds down a hallway and not trigger security busting down a door and arresting him because he waited 10 minutes till he started the mass slaughter? Where was the hotel security? Exactly. And there Maybe we should ask Jerry Brown. He knows a lot about global warming. Or Rob Reiner may be able to answer the question. And if that doesn't work, maybe Jimmy Kimmel can be asked uh, the solution to that problem since he became a genius after dropping out of the University of Las Vegas. Yeah, what little... Yeah, all right, look, it's sickening, the whole Don thing. I have one more caller here, Jordan on KPRC Radio. Jordan, thank you for calling. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I've been saying it to years. I've been telling my husband about it. The, the whole casting couch thing, when Corey Heyman, I might be saying that wrong, when he died... His friend, um, you know, they all did the Goonies, the Lost Boys together, I'm drawing a blank on his name, came out and did a television interview about the evils of Hollywood and the, the rape and boy on boy and all this stuff that's going on. And it may have been a television interview, but it didn't make headlines like this. And no, that's right. And why are we hearing nothing about the boys who have been molested in Hollywood and are being molested? And by the way, what about women on men? Why have we heard no stories of powerful women in Hollywood demanding, let us say, a relationship with other women? You think that goes on? How come we haven't heard about the female Harvey Weinstein? How's that for a stinger for the end of the show? Is there a female Harvey Weinstein, a known female sexual predator who has preyed upon young starlets for her entire career? We'll report tomorrow on The Savage Nation.